Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Phil Cooper. I'm the European MP of uh, Brightwell. Uh, Brightwell is a video network. Uh, previously, I started a company called U Target in 2005, which was the UK's, if not Europe's, first video network. Uh, video advertising has been slow to adopt the changes that have been seen in performance marketing as far as uh, audience targeting is concerned. And notably, the advancements in performance marketing which have evolved around RTG and its changes have allowed impression level buying, which is, which, in the, which is now crossing over into video advertising. My panel of guests are amongst leaders in both video and audience targeting. Uh, with me here is uh, Jana Eisenstein, uh, who is the uh, Director of Publisher Services, uh, EMEA for, for Videology. Have, uh, Andy Sarfas, who's the Director of Special Operations at Telemetry, and finally Ryan Keane, who's the Director of Business Development at uh, Audience Science. Um, if I could allow my uh, guest, panel guests to introduce themselves, so Jan. Thank you. Hi. Good afternoon. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, as Phil said, I'm Jan Eisenstein. I'm from Videology, and Videology is um, basically a company that um, at the core of our, our business, it's a, it's a video advertising platform. And I guess um, targeting or audience targeting is in the, in the DNA of the company, really. It's, it's been founded by the founding team of advertising.com. Um, and if you remember them, that kind of the, I guess the secret sauce of advertising.com was all about targeting. And it's really been looking at the, at the needs of advertisers in the video area, particularly, and developing a platform that can deliver kind of optimal um, campaigns according to video advertisers' objectives. So in that sense, what um, Videology does is at, at, the, at the fundamental, we're an advertising um, targeting platform um, where we, we basically optimize and we target video campaigns against campaign objectives. Um, and at the same, uh, for, for advertisers, so most of our clients are, are advertising agencies and brands. Um, and we also provide supporting solu services to accompany our platform, which includes anything from um, kind of data procurement to uh, media procurement. And then, of course, we've got the ad targeting and the optimization reporting and analytics. Um, and uh, in terms of our focus, like I said, it's video content, so we call it sight, sound, motion content. Um, but we also are able to target across uh, a number of platforms. So today, our, our major um, staple of volume is across the computer, so PC-type VOD content. But we're also capable of, capable of and also doing it today, is, is um, having targeted video advertising across mobile um, platforms as well as connected TVs. Thank you. Andy, um, tell, me, tell me about telemetry yourself. Please. Yeah, hi. I'm Andy Sarfas. work at telemetry. Um, we work directly with advertisers and agencies to serve and report on online video, interactive online video, and rich media campaigns. So we have a specific focus on full transparency of reporting across numerous metrics. So we're able to tell the advertisers, the agencies, and the publishers exactly how many ads have been requested, how many ads have been delivered, and importantly, we, we have a number of metrics that report what the consumer did whilst the ad was playing. So how engaged were they with the content? Um, and that gives a, a good indication of the accuracy of the targeting. So did you reach the right audience? Were they engaged with your ad? So we go beyond just a simple how many ads were delivered. Um, we, we try and get into the what was the consumer doing? So what was, what was the audience doing whilst the ad was delivered? Um, we work across a number of agencies, a number of advertisers, um, across all markets globally. <coughs> okay. Ryan. Thanks Andy, thanks Phil. Um, pleasure to be here. My name's Ryan Keane and I head up business development for audience science across Europe. Um, so what is audience science? Well, audience science has been around for about nine or ten years uh, providing technology. Um, primarily providing technology to web publishers to the likes of the Financial Times or Sky or, um, or, the, fi or, or the New York Times. Um, basically allowing them to aggregate their own data, to allow them to build audiences and to take out to market a data-driven audience solution to their advertising agencies. It's been known in the past as behavioral targeting. Now a lot more data is coming on board, um, hence the move to, to the new term of audience targeting. 
What we've seen recently is the move for advertisers and agencies to start taking on the platform themselves. So being able to manage their own data, they have a huge number of people going to their own websites, they serve up a huge number of adverts, they, they serve video ads, they look at um, engagement across all of these different channels, across search, across email, and they want a place where they can transparently aggregate their own data, build their own audiences, and use functionality like real-time bidding and demand-side platforms, and indeed publishers directly to be able to deliver those, deliver those adverts. Um, so recently we've seen a huge amount of growth f uh, with our company um, with being able to provide that technology, that platform and indeed um, additional data sets to <coughs> advertising agencies directly alongside the publishers that we've, been, that we've been working with. So trying to tie together the whole ecosystem when it comes to um, audience targeting. Thank you. Um, Jana, so in fact, um, can you tell me what sort of audience targeting you incorporate at, uh, at video, Videology? Sure, sure. Um, we have a number of different types of targeting that we can incorporate. I think the, the fundamental type of targeting that we initially, first of all, incorporate is, is demographic targeting. And the reason being is in video, um, you know, we believe that in order to grow the market, it's really being able to talk to TV planner buyers and talk to them in a language they understand. And historically, or, or traditionally, TV planning and buying has been all around audiences. So um, I guess first and foremost, we target on, an, on a, a demographic basis, so age and gender. We also offer um, behavioral targeting, um, socioeconomic targeting, geographic targeting, of course, um, as well as contextual targeting. Um, and then we have a couple of, kind of we, can, we can also incorporate, as you know, required by the advertisers, search retargeting and other kind of very specific Excellent. Would you, would you say that uh, video targeting, audience targeting, has caught up with performance targeting? Not quite yet. Not quite <laughs> yet. Okay. Um, but uh, the good news is it's, <coughs> it's, it's definitely growing. Mm -hmm. um, again, I think you know, shifting spend into video advertising really has to come from moving some, some of the TV spend yes. into video. And um, historically, again, TV planner and buyers have bought con on a contextual, on a placement basis. Um, and I think just now, I mean, we've definitely seen over the last 18 months, you know, uh, the agency is starting to launch and focus on audience buying. Um, it's moved into the video environment. Um, and we've seen, um, certainly our clients have, have tested. And that actually what, the, what, what they're finding is that they are enjoying the benefits of a, of a targeted media, but also that it has um, really detailed and robust analytics and reporting and something perhaps they're not so used to from the TV environment. So, you know, Typically, we find that once we work with an advertiser and they've actually, you know, run some some VOD campaigns with us, and the spend starts to grow. So, mm. um, you know, we're not quite there yet, but it's encouraging, yeah, it's growing. You. Ryan, how would you, uh, how would, what, what audience targeting do you offer for video to your clients? Um, well <coughs> it's um, it's an interesting it's an interesting question. Um, in terms of the specific audience targeting that we offer for video, it's, it's exactly the same as the type of audience targeting that we would offer for display advertisers, for um, publishers who want to target specific content at their users. We find it's, um, it's, it's similar across all of those different channels. Um, and the type of targeting, the history of the company has, has been from behaviors. So it's looking at where has the user been in the past, how many times have they engaged with certain areas, um, what content have they read, so looking at the actual words within articles, what searches have they performed, um, what industry do they work in, do they work for a big company or a small company. Um, so that's been the, the sort of history of the company and taking in any kind of registration information as well. Um, what, we've, what we've seen and, uh, and, and what our company is doing now is working with companies to try and allow <coughs> them to um, bring on board their offline data. So it's not just about online behavioral targeting anymore, but it's now talking to them and talking to their data people about what offline data do you guys have? If you're a telco, do you have a lot of offline data about your customers? Can we bring that on board? Mm -hmm. So that's the type of um, information that we're, that we're enabling advertisers and to start do you, using. Do you distinguish between how you handle audience targeting for performance for video marketing? Um, Is it the same? I mean, it's, it's the same types of data, it's just applied in a different type of way. So um, for something like, um, for a brand advertiser, they, they still want that reach going on there. And so, and especially for when it's applied to video, um, I, I mean, what you guys will, will also find in the UK, obviously there's, there's a huge number of banner ads, but um, the number of video ads out there is, 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 is smaller and people spend longer 
viewing those viewing those video ads. So um, those audiences need to be broader to try and get that scale out 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 there. Is are you, su are you it, suggesting it, that maybe you'd use in banner rather than in stream video to to, to retarget? Exactly. To get ex a wider audience. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, but also. There is for, for a direct response advertiser, there's a sense of optimization that needs to go on and you need to be able to have those kind of audience levers in there to work out which audience is working best and then, yes. and then push the optimization towards that particular audience. Whereas if, a, if an advertiser has already determined that actually I want to reach men, ABC men, ABC one men, age 16 to 24, for my brand, because that's what I'm doing offline, then there's not necessarily any kind of optimization per se towards the right audience yeah. that necessarily has to go on for, for a brand advertiser. Yeah. Andy, your, your telemetry's in the job of, of more um, finding out if somebody has found the right audience, verifying, auditing that audience, and, uh, and actually ultimately working out if that audience is doing what you want them to do, or, or gauging if they're engaging with the creative. How, how does telemetry do that? Yeah, so I, I think the first part of the puzzle is, is targeting your audience. You're right, finding the audience, getting them online, or getting your ads in front of them online. For me, and uh, I was formerly uh, at Record Bank Kiza, so when I was placing ads for Record Bank Kiza, for me, it's, it's the most important thing is to get in engagement from the audience. Mm -hmm. So it's one thing to hit your 16 to 24 year old male. Um, the more important thing is to get them engaged with your advertising. So the right audience, might not be engaged depend, uh, in every instance. So it depends on context, it depends on time of day, day of week, etc. So what, what telemetry do is we attempt to tell the, pub tell the advertiser and the publisher whether the audience is engaged. So you may have found your right audience online, but are they watching your video all the way through? Are they watching the video to the key point in the ad where you've got, you've got your message, your call to action? Um, what are they doing whilst they're watching the video? Are they looking for a close button? Are they looking for a skip button? So we do heat maps, etc., mouse tracking to see what's the consumer doing whilst the ad is running. So you can see not only how much of the ad has the consumer watched, but have they engaged with the ad? One key point of difference that we do as well is we add elements of interactivity into the ad. <coughs> it asks the consumer to engage with the ad. So in my former days at, at uh, RB, some of the examples were um, we were advertising uh, surface wipes. So the ad clearly, in most of the ads, it shows somebody using a surface wipe. So in the ad, you would ask the consumer to interact with the video in real time to use the surface wipe. And what that does is that tells us if, if the consumer is actually actively watching the ad and understanding. So if you can get the consumer actively engaged in your ad, as long as the creative agency have done their job correctly, then you're going to sell more products. So you'd go as far as get going back to the creative and developing creative that would have an extra engagement point to therefore measure engagement in the ad. A absolutely, yeah. and, and through the metrics that we can deliver telemetry, you can test different creatives to see if it's engaging with your audience. Some creatives might engage with your audience during the daytime and not at night, not in the evening. You can see all of that data and then you can, you can work with your publishers to dynamically move the ads, change the creative for the time of day, etc. Was there a particular time of day that people interacted with the wipes more? Or <laughs> <laughs> Didn't care. Couldn't possibly yeah. have answered. Um, Jana, talking about creative, do you find that there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a, a length of ad that you recommend to your clients that will perform better? And, and does that vary according to its position, pre or mid roll, or maybe the content length it's set against? It's a, it's a really good question when we get a lot of. And it's a good follow-on, actually, to what we were just discussing. And, 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 the, and I think there it really depends on the objectives of the campaign. So it, it varies. Um, you know, what we found is that um, you get different results or different you reach different, um, you know, interaction levels depending on the length of the actual creative. So, um, you know, the longer creatives, um, we've seen um, em empirically that you have what's a higher click-through rate. So, you know, if the campaign is all about engagement and response, then you know, we would recommend a, a longer creative. If it's about, you know, if it's a sh that would be a 30 second creative. If, if it's a shorter creative, um, you know, you, you get higher view through rates or basically, you know, higher kind of brand engagement rather than, than response engagement. And um, in terms of best practices and what we recommend, it's really understanding, first of all, what the objectives of the campaigns are and then optimizing the different creative kind of lengths mm -hmm. to, to meet that. And then also on top of that, what you do have, and this is what you're talking about, Andy, 
is you've got the possibilities to enhance the creative. So we've got overlays, which might, you know, um, again, incite you to, have to, to, to perform some call to action. Um, you can also have social sharing buttons in it, so you can share. Um, <coughs> you could also have special functionality, so calendar settings, all that sort of thing that will help you create the engagement you're looking for. Excellent. Ryan, um, in display real-time bidding has become very, uh, very sort of uh, central in the, in, the, in the way that it actually now enables uh, client advertisers to not just select which pieces of inventory they want, impression by impression, but also what they want to pay for each, each piece, impression by impression. Is real-time bidding very much part of your video roadmap or, or, or program at the moment? Um, yeah, we, um, we, we use real-time bidding. In fact, we've um, spent a lot of time building our own bidder in, in itself. Um, and it's being rolled out <coughs> in the US at the moment. Um, it's predominantly being used at the moment on um, banner ads. And I believe there are probably some, some in-video banner being used for that at the moment. Um, we have uh, a video proposition as well. And <coughs> I don't know the dates exactly, but I'm sure the two of them will come together will come together fairly soon. Um, it, it, it comes up to that, that, that scale thing again as to how much video inventory is available in real time. I know there is video available in real time, but obviously the more that you get, the more targeted you, you can get and the more data that you can use for that. And Jana, is, is um, real time bidding something that's in your roadmap or in part of your, uh, part of your platform at the moment? Yeah, I think it just comes back to what you were saying about market maturity, so from video. Um, it's definitely in our roadmap. It's yeah. something that we are um, and have been participating in for, let's say, the last kind of year in the U.S. Um, uh, here in the U.K., we haven't quite seen that liquidity yet in mm. the market environment to yeah. allow us to, to run real-time bidding, but uh, certainly as soon as the, as the market is ready, absolutely, yeah, it's great. Right. It's great. Um, Jana, you mentioned television in the beginning and that, that, that a lot of the budget currently sits, I, I believe, um, um, video advertising budgets are split in between sort of ones which emanate from broadcast and some which come from the new media side. Mm -hmm. And uh, the pot which is sitting on the broadcast side is, is, is very plentiful and not pushing over quite as quickly as we hoped um, in, this, in this world that we live in. Uh, in the TV world, they measure uh, advertising in GRPs. Do you think uh, that's a useful metric or do you think that broadcasters will have to understand that there's a lot more can be done in the digital world with the statistics and reporting that we can offer. Yeah, I mean, I don't, don't see the question as discreet. Um, you know, I think that the, there's a, in order to, to shift more spend, I, you know, it's an evolution and, um, you know, what we've seen is that if we can move, you know, GR, if we can move the same type of metric into um, videos, that will only help us in terms of shifting the, yeah. the spend. Um, you know, you're not, you're not fighting an uphill battle, and, it, and it's a, a metric that everybody understands. And it's certainly something that we're using on the video side that we're yeah. trying to, you know, equalize and use something com comparable to what you would have on, yeah. on a TV scale. So I think, yes, it's definitely, a, I think it's a good thing, and, you know, we should definitely yeah. move towards there. And at the same time, there are other metrics that, you, that are available mm -hmm. in digital, and, you know, the TV planner buyers will learn to use them with time. But, you know, yeah. in order to, to build scale and to a actually to create... Um, you know, a sense of, of understanding and trust in the environment, I think it's important that we continue to work on that. So effectively using the common language that the broadcasters <coughs> understand and then, and then later on showing them there's a few yeah. other opportunities. Yeah. Right. Um, Ryan, 59% of Americans surf the internet and watch TV at the same time. Do you have any sort of what they call two-screen strategies <laughs> to uh, target perhaps users that are on TV and also on, online? Yeah, there is... Um, <laughs> There's a number of technologies out there. I mean, if you if you look at um, if you look at the likes of Sky with their with their set top box and the Sky ID system, where, whereby they're trying to target people online based on their IDs and based on their individual identifiers, there are ways in which that can happen. Um, there is going to be the, the the advent and uh, I suppose the dissemination more of IPTV of HTML5 and all of these types of technologies, which are going to permeate the home um, a lot more than they do it right now. Are going to <coughs> they're going to enable that. That, that ability to target across multiple platforms. Um, and I think if you look at companies like Google who sit there and have built, built out um, their own way of analyzing across multiple platforms, um, that, that type of technology is going to, is going to help um, be able to target users across those multiple platforms. Um, 
that's the end goal, right? And yeah. there are a number of routes at the moment, a number of technologies which look like they might be able to achieve that goal. Mm. Okay. Um, in, t in 2000, Bill Gates came up with his top 10 tips for the decade. Um, and uh, one of those was that by the end of the decade, 2010, maybe it's being held back by the credit crunch, that all advertising would be online. Um, I don't think people really interpreted what he meant back then, but I think part of, part of what he meant was that, that everything would converge and be, and be delivered by IP, internet protocol technology. Um, connected TVs are on the rise, so sort of the first stage of, of, of integration. Jana, are you, uh, do you have much uh, request from advertisers to target connected TVs? Um, I think that the interest is absolutely there. Um, I think the request will come once the scale is there. So. Uh, I, I think it's a, everybody thinks it's an exciting medium. It's kind of converging, as, as you said, IP mm. with the yeah. big screen, which is super exciting. Um, but in order, you know, for, for again, if you're looking at the TV buying community, even mm. even digital, if you want to if you want to target, you need some level of scale. Mm. So I think the initial interest is there. We certainly are working with advertisers um, <coughs> with connected TV applications. Yes. Um, you know, but everybody will kind of jump in once we reach mm. a certain. So the interest is there, but not yet the scale. Scale, um, Andy. One area where possibly the scale is there is is mobile, in the sense that there is a, a lot of mobile um, app inventory which videos can be served into. Is that something that, that telemetry is starting to to, to put onto their roadmap in terms of? Uh, it's certainly clients? possible, and all of the testing has been done to allow videos to be served, and mm. many, if not all, of the metrics reported on as well. Um, but we've had no requests yet from clients or agencies for mobile campaigns. I think part of, the, part of the issue is it comes back to the targeting. So you can target on mobile, but you don't know if you're hitting the same people that you've hit on your online campaign mm -hmm. or on your TV campaign as well. So you might just be blowing your frequency. Mm. Um, yeah. So it, it's a conundrum that hasn't been solved yet. Um, the scale's certainly there on mobile in terms of devices, obviously. But whether consumers would be acceptable of a 30 second or a 15 second video commercial on their mobile device, I'm not sure. We haven't seen the demand from clients yet, but okay. technically it's possible. Ryan, do you have a mobile uh, proposition at Audience Science that's doing mobile video? Or <coughs> we have, um, <coughs> so, so we work on cookies, and the inherent <laughs> difficulty with a lot of third party cookies is um, certain mobile don't allow you to drop those third-party cookies on the users, which causes technical problems. Um, we have um, a mobile offering which is easier to roll out in countries such as Japan, which um, where we use um, WAP technology over there. Um, it's not a real-time targeting solution. However, it is something that we do, and it's something that we offer up to a couple of key, key clients that we work with in Japan. Um, it is something that's on our roadmap to take yeah. a look a lot further at. Um, at the moment, we are still we've still got our hands full with uh, with with uh, with the web. <laughs> we um, we actually do work in mobile um, in the states. In the UK, again, we're you know it's on our roadmap. We'd like to launch it. Um, kind of, the, I guess what we've seen in the US is you're right. We've got the cookie issue is a big one in terms of, of targeting, in terms of capability. But you know, with mob we target based on third-party data, so we d we do have ways of being able to target through acquiring third-party data for, for mobile applications. Um, although you can't link it back to, to your online. Um, uh, so, but but we have done it. We are running it, and we try to include you know mobile elements in campaigns. Um, again, you know the the scale is still not entirely. Although there's a you know very high penetration of mobile handsets, the actual usage and inventory availability of mobile content for serving ads into is still quite small. Right. Okay, interesting. Now, uh, a lot of the targeting is, um, as, as Ryan s sort of initially brought up, is, is cookie-based. Um, what cookie-less targeting uh, do you think will uh, be introduced uh, with the advent of the new EU directive where opt-in, opt-out cookies uh, have become a, uh, well, cookies become a, uh, a thing of the past, potentially? <laughs> Oh, the wonderful world of privacy. <laughs> <laughs> um, cookie-less targeting. Well, I think there are there are companies out there who offer the type of targeting that uh, that is that has been done um, for for forever with 
offline video and offline television where you've been able to target around <coughs> certain types of content instead of targeting based on a cookie. Um, at the moment, um, I'm hoping that um, cookie-less targeting will not, uh, or, or cookies will be, will be uh, okay to be used in the future and that there's, there's a few moves that are being made by the IB around self-regulation of the cookies, et cetera, et cetera. So um, cookie-less targeting, targeting based <coughs> on, there are, there are a number of different technologies out there, but they probably bring up their own, their own issues in terms of privacy when you, when you look at things like um, keyboard fingerprinting and um, targeting by a user's individual IP address, which in some countries is deemed as personally identifiable anyway. So um, actually, the, 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 the premise of cookie-less targeting based on an individual yeah. is, is hopefully something that, that won't have to happen. Um, and we have, we okay. have a lot of work to be done to make yeah. consumers a bit more comfortable with the use of cookies. Jana, do you have any uh, opinion on, on sort of if we find ourselves, I know it's still not necessarily guaranteed, but if we do find ourselves in a cookie-less um, environment for targeting, do you have any, uh, any, any, any sort of insight into yes. this? Yeah. Um, so I think that in that case, we would be reliant on um, you know, acquiring offline, having offline sources of data and trying to match them. Okay, that's what we're doing through cookies right now, but we would need to find other kind of ways of correlating um, the data. Um, in terms of targeting, you know, you would look at in, in contextual targeting or environmental targeting and, and just other ways of being yeah. able, be able to understand. So, for example, in the mobile environment, certain handsets are for certain types of demographic profiles and that sort of thing. So you could, you know, we'd have to look at kind of using extrapolation. Back to the dark ages. Yeah. Extrapolation, yeah. I mean, hopefully, I, I'm not sure if we're going to get there. The yes. interpretations are, you know, more for opt-in versus opt-out. Hopefully it'll be opt-out. Mm. Um, in the States, again, we're running with this icon, mm -hmm. the opt-out icon, right. and in the U.S., they've got, the, mm -hmm. they've decided to, to work on an opt-out basis. At um, the browser level as well, I think. Yes, know, exactly, yeah. 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 So you've got the icon on, on the actual advert itself, mm -hmm. and then you can also um, decide on a, on a browser basis. Yeah. So we can use that. Look, thank you very much for, 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 for uh, coming here today to discuss video audience targeting. Uh, video audience targeting is, is very much catching up with the performance part of the online marketing mix and uh, can offer great opportunity for advertisers and clients to buy in a more TV manner um, with TV scale and advancement uh, in, the, in the next year or two should actually enable buyers to actually achieve more than they can buy potentially from their, from their TV or at least complement their TV buy. Um, it's been very interesting to hear all the different aspects of, uh, of, of, uh, of, of how different companies have advanced in the sector. And I hope you <coughs> find this very useful. But if you'd like to ask some questions to my panel, uh, we've got uh, 10, 10 or 15 minutes. Please, please fire away. Does anybody have a question? Oh, okay. Please. Are there any other recommendations you have for the gentleman or for the audience? Um, Andrew, would you like to have a look? It's a tough one, yeah. Um, I guess the easiest thing, obviously, is the number of downloads. Um, then, I guess the only other way of doing it would be to somehow store the metrics locally when the videos are, are viewed, and next time they connect, to try and transmit that back. I guess there's going to be privacy concerns, etc. Um, it's not something that we've, we've done in the past. Um, but I'm sure it's a challenge that the tech team would relish coming up with a solution for. Um, so but a tough one. So no, uh, no obvious solutions here above to sort of measure the downloads and uh, uh, back to the tech team, I think, for that one. Sorry. Would anyone else like to ask a question? 
So, um, so, do we think that, uh, that the, uh, the, the broadcast sales houses will have to adapt to sort of to the way of online business effectively, or are there changes happening in that sense? Uh, who would like to answer that one? Yeah, I, I think I read an article a few weeks back about uh, an agency in the U.S. that was starting to do this. So, for their, uh, I can't remember <coughs> which agency it was, primarily a TV house that was offering um, to buy audience across both TV and online. So clearly, I think that that's the future. So from, a, from an advertiser's point of view, I want the audience. Whether I reach it through Hulu or through broadcast, am I bothered? Not really, as long as I get the audience. And in fact, it's probably a, uh, a benefit to buy across channels because then I'm not blowing my frequency. So I talked about it. If I want to hit the person three times, I want to hit them three times. I don't want to hit them three times on broadcast and three times online. So buying across multiple channels makes, as long as we can marry them up and make sure that we're not reaching them twice. Which would require a panel, cross, cross panel, wouldn't it? Across many panels. E either across, so a Nielsen type panel yeah. that, that exists, um, or some other similar panel. Um, but it, it would make sense, it seems to be the future. I think the article I read was um, as much about the pricing disparity between broadcast and online as well, and trying to bring them back into, uh, into sync. So you know, it's completely, makes sense and I would think it's the future. I think it's a, it's a very um, forward looking um, strategy to follow from, from an agency. Anyone else? Yeah, I'll, I'll add to that. I think, um, I think, I think the latter is probably true in terms of <coughs> TV starting to mimic a lot more about what online can offer. Um, I'm not saying demographic targeting isn't isn't, isn't going to exist. Of course, it's going to exist, but I think there is going to be space for other types of targeting, targeting people based on their specific interests rather than their, ne their demographics, and which fit very well alongside the traditional type of type of TV buying. If you look at if you look at companies like Sky who offer their Sky ID um, uh, targeted TV advertising that they can now do on TV through their set top boxes, that's absolutely the way in which I think people are going to be going and um, companies are going to be moving forward. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, well, um, thank you for attending and uh, if you'd like to ask anyone a question afterwards, please do.